Hello everyone, it's Bubbles. Um, I know you guys haven't seen me for ages, so um, hi if you've been missing me. Um, oh my gosh. <coughs> <coughs> okay. So, if you're new here, well, firstly, please subscribe. Um, we, we would love to have you around. But uh, if, you, if you've been around for a while, you probably noticed I haven't been around. Um, so I thought, you know what? Let's starting with this video, let's uh, let's explain some things. So firstly, I have a cold. It has actually been a lot worse. It's getting a bit better now, um, but it's still been horrible. And every time I want to laugh, my chest just really like fucks everything up. And um, it's not good for streaming. So I haven't really been doing much streaming. I want to record some things, but it's also really saps the ability of me to be able to do that. Um, I am planning on editing some old footage to throw up, um, because there was a stream a few weeks ago that I think would be really good to get some highlights from. Um, as well as, uh, trying to play some games. The other thing is that right now with gaming, it, I felt a little bit uninspired, like... <sighs> I was, I was, it was occurring to me, my last weekend stream, I was staring at my library of games, and I didn't know what I wanted to play. As, as I'm speaking right now, the, the new Dead by Daylight chapter is due to come out tomorrow, which is great. I'm looking forward to that. I have taken a bit of a break from Dead by Daylight just for a week. I wanted to have a bit of a breather. I had my account ready for the night when it came out, but I didn't really want to... Um, tinker with that, I didn't want to burn myself out before the night came out. Sorry, pardon moi. Uh, the, the <laughs> but the, pro the problem is that if I had other stuff to do in different games, then that would have been one thing, but I finished the Fall Guys pass. Uh, Fortnite, I just managed to finish the, uh, the Fortnite pass as well, so I've got everything on that. And Siege has also been really dry for content. Um... I finished the battle pass on that as well, and I just, I, I don't know. I've been hanging out for something to, something new to drop, um, but that hasn't been much. But, speaking of Siege, um, here we are. So, I thought, uh, what better way to get back into things than to react to the next season for Siege? Um, so I'm really excited for this, I'm hoping it's good. I will cut out the shit stuff, um, and you'll just get my general reactions for the, uh, season. Now, the funny thing about all of this is I don't think I've ever actually uploaded any of my Siege stuff to YouTube. I've streamed a little bit of it on Twitch, but it has been a while. There is a plan to do a 12-hour stream soon on my Twitch, and we will definitely be playing some Siege on that day. I would also like to get some more on YouTube, so if you want to see more Siege on YouTube, let me know. Uh, I'm really keen to maybe give it a shot. Um, but let's get into the reaction. Let's, uh, let's see what's coming with the next season. Hello everyone, and welcome to Operation Solar Raid. I'm Camille Salzar Hadaway, and today we're sharing a huge season with you. It all starts with a new squad that specializes in stealth and is led by yeah, that's Heather right. and Kavera herself. It's called Ghost Dice. So Kavera is one of my favorite will be uh, this operators, so I'm actually really, really down for this. And creative director Alexander Karpazes is here to reveal more. Now, brace yourself, because there's a lot happening this season. And you don't want to miss it. I've heard apparently we're going to Night Haven, so I'm, I'm actually really, really down for this. Um, hey everyone, hopefully super it's excited to introduce Operation Solar Raid, probably our biggest season ever. Yeah. From top to bottom, we're adding a ton of features that you've asked about, including cross-play, cross-progression. Oh my god, I know this has okay. been really important for you. The team's been working super hard to deliver it. And we have so, so much more. This season, we're introducing another new squad. It's Ghost Eyes, led by Kavera, and a newcomer, Solus, is joining the team as well. This okay. is the squad. Can you show me team, who's in it? The squad of stealth. Please, please. And the squad okay. Of int Hang on. Let, let, let's, 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 let's. I don't know. I don't know what that is. This. Okay. Look, the thing is, I absolutely love Wolfguard. Um. Some of my favorite operators are in Wolfguard, and I think, funnily enough, I think pretty much everyone else I enjoy playing is is hidden in here somewhere. Uh, 
Caviera, massive fan. Um, Valkyrie, I, I absolutely love her. Flores, Yana, um, I'm glad to see they're all here. Okay, cool. So hopefully we're getting some skins for them with the, uh, the next pass. Uh, we'll see, obviously, but yeah. And I'm thinking Solus will be somebody I quite enjoy, but I need to see what her ability is. I, I, I just know she's stealth and speed. I just, I don't know anything else beyond that. She also looks like a wasp, uh, clone. But yeah. Tell. And you'll get to learn a lot more about their story when we launch the season later. We have Solus, the new operator that's joining Rainbow Six and the Ghost Eyes. She so looks like the Wasp and from the MCU. We have a new map, or, or maybe even map, Darren an Cross. Amazing place to explore and to battle. It's unlike anything else we've ever introduced in the game, and we hope you have a lot of fun exploring. Okay, so the TDM Anti-cheat map. and anti-toxicity is one of the most important topics for us, which means it's really special for us today to introduce the reputation score in-game. It's coming to you in a beta phase, so you get to know it a little bit more, and we're introducing more security features in our game to make sure that it is more resilient and more fair for everybody to play. All of this and much, Radio. much more, we have quality of life features that are coming in, balancing changes that are coming in, and even more on top of that. So we can't wait to share everything that the team's been working so hard on this season. Operation Solar Raid is coming, and right, so it here's is Solus. a big one. But before we break it down for you, here's a glimpse of your new operator in action on the new Night Haven Labs map. Solis joins the Defenders with an electronics detecting augmented reality headset that allows her to not just spot attacker oh. gadgets in action, but also reveal them to her teammates. In the so she's IQ, battlegrounds of siege, Intel is power, and Solis delivers the goods. That is a little bit nutty. Attackers will have to play smarter this season. As Solis, the new Defender, has her eyes on their gadgets. So Hang on, yeah, sorry, I just... <laughs> I, I think the most interesting part about that is that it pinged somebody on their phone. That is a little bit nutty. I'm wondering if she's going to have C4 available. Um, because if she does, she's going to be one of the riskiest things on the battlefield now. Because you can't drone without come messing with her. Concept artist Sunshine Kim will tell us more while director of gameplay design Jeremy Carvan and game designer Dominic Clement give us the details on her gadget and the new opportunities it unlocks. Oh no, this is going to be French, isn't it? We wanted Solis's nope. gadget okay. to grab immediate attention from the audience. I immediately thought of examples like Jackal and Nuck. Because of their gadget, you know, the Inox and the HEL creates immediate attention. Their gadgets are something that separates it from just being a generic soldier. And we wanted Solis to have a similar treatment. We allow the gadget to have a little bit more futuristic vibe while yeah. the rest of designing is a lot more toned down. I do need to say, I um, as far as operator design, this may be the best cosmetically looking base design for an operator that I've seen possibly in the time I've been playing Siege. So I started um, Siege when I was playing Neon Dawn. I know, it's hilarious. I've been playing this game for about two years at this point and I've still yet to upload much to YouTube um, or stream it much on Twitch. But no, I've been, I've been playing this game for a little while now. And um, each year, I will say, the operators have been pretty good. I, I've been reasonably impressed each time, but this is honestly the coolest looking operator that they had in a while. So, um, yeah, fair play to the arts team. Which makes the gadget pop up even more. It wasn't enough. There's something... God, that's such a itself. nice design. That's when the antenna idea came up, which goes up when it's activated and goes down when it's deactivated. It might be a small element, but it adds so much taste. Yeah. So to design Solis' device, we were looking for something that needed two hands to be operated and something that wasn't going to take too much uh, of the vision space. So we thought about uh, augmented reality. We were very excited with all the modern visual that it could add to the game. Solis kit is made of three main parts. The helmet, the bracelet, and the gloves. So when the helmet turns on, the screen switch from transparent to glowy yellow and the HUD elements uh, start to show for the user. 
The second part is the bracelet. It's used as a placement tag for the ER interface. Oh, okay. The ER, in ER interface. Keep note, okay? Um, it does look like you trade up your ability to use your guns um, while you have the device active. Um, so that is a little bit different to IQ. Um, and I think that's fair. I think that that's actually a fair shout. It's uh, shaped as a 3D ring. It's used by Solis I, um, to interact I'm curious with about how quickly she can the, switch the from and the this to the middle part of this ADS. AR interface. Or and when the scan is performed, Hitler. you have this, this pulse of 3D lines that starts and fades in distance, giving the position of every electronic device on its way. This idea came from a brainstorm that we had, and a question arose, well, what if we have an IQ on defense? <laughs> you see that there's a lot Literally. of gadgets. You have reaching charges, you have claymores, and a tons, of, tons and tons of drones and cameras. So it just made sense that the defense would have a tool similar to what the attackers have. Yeah. She'll have a zone in the center of her screen where she'll be able to identify these gadgets and tell precisely, okay, that's a drone, that's a claymore, oh. that's a reaching charge. Okay, I didn't notice that. So she's actually got like a, like a, I don't know what the, what to say, call it, like a universal ping. So IQ doesn't have that. I, IQ, you have to individually ping the gadgets, whereas she's got like, she can just hold it down and scan everything in the area, which is, again, it's kind of nice. Obviously, it will be operator specific. If, you, if you're going against a team that's just like, heavy rush down, like, maybe you got your Ying, your Blitz, your, I don't know, characters like that who aren't going to have a lot of electronic stuff active until it's too late, um, you're not going to notice much use out of it. But this is a character who will definitely deal with, like, a lot of the Intel operators uh, in particular. She's the only one who gets to see this information. If she wants to share with the team, she needs to use our communication tools like voice chats or uh, text chat. But if she wants quick and easy communication with the rest of the team as to like where these gadgets are, are and uh, what to do with them, she can use her secondary abil ability, which will send a pulse on her screen and will smart ping every gadget in the center of her screen. So the ones that are identified will be smart ping, uh, giving a clear indication to the rest of the team That's pretty cool. where, the, where they are and what to do with them. Usually with loadouts, we try to give flexibility for players. We give the It is gonna like beg the question of like what's defined as an electronic gadget and what's defined as a uh, mechanical gadget. A, a bit similarly to how like IQ can't ping frost traps. Um, cause the thing is like, I can't think of any examples of that off the top of my head, but I've got to imagine there's some, uh, instances where there's characters who have gadgets that she just won't be able to see. The P90 as a primary, because it's a super good SMG, super interesting. Yeah, P90 is legendary. another SMG as a sidearm, because it's also a really good weapon. But we're also giving Solis a, a shotgun, because being able to create, rotate, and help on site. Oh, hang on, was that? Help, like, reshape. What They're probably going to say it again. I just want to see it though. Impact bulletproof. Okay, so she doesn't have a nitro, but um, team her up with like a pulse or somebody and I reckon she'll start getting some uh, walk kills really easy. But we're also giving Solis a, a shotgun. Maybe not even pulse. Pulse can kind of do that. Rotate and help on site and help like reshape the map is also very, very interesting for an operator like this. And with the sidearm, again, that is SMG, it allows you to bring the shotgun and still have an SMG at hand if you really need to defend yourself. I love how and they took this away from the Sledge. To, a, <laughs> to an operator as a primary weapon, nonetheless a 2-2 operator, so 2 health and 2 speed operator. It's really cool to see a weapon with such rapid rate of fire and a big magazine on an operator that can move quite fast. Oh, so she's 2 2. I, I heard that she was going to be really fast. On. She doesn't have any weapons, so she can't really defend herself unless she turns off the ability and then pulls back her weapon. Giving the impact to Solis allows her to kind of help her d destroy any gadgets coming her way as a last resort. If she doesn't have anything else and she's in a panic and she needs to, to deal with the, the utility that she sees or she needs to get away quickly, she can use the impact to create a rotation or, or use the, the impact to destroy any utility that she detects. The bulletproof cam is very useful in combination with the gadget because you can detect a gadget and then use the bulletproof cam with the EMP shot to disable the gadget. Nah. 
she especially is interesting to I I I, I, I thought that's what they were going to say um that is on a wall trying to bend it trick she can actually be right behind him and tell Bandit, okay, they're going to be breaching the left wall, the right wall, the middle wall. It can give much clearer information as to where Bandit needs to put his batteries. You also have Mozzie. Uh, since Solace is able to detect and spot the, the drones coming towards the site, she can give this information to Mozzie so okay. he can place his yeah. test and hopefully capture as many drones as he can. The Solace has a few counters. If you're facing a Solace that is uh, hankering on site, you might want to bring a Thatcher or the EMP grenades, they're really useful to uh, disable and deny Solus her ability. If you have an IQ also, that's a very useful operator to hunt down Solus because when the advisor is activated... Oh, uh, IQ, IQ versus Solus is going to be such a fun matchup. ...hunt down the Solus, maybe anchoring on site. If you're facing a Solus that is roaming around, you might want to bring your classic roam clear operator like Lion, a Grim, and Jackal. They're very useful to kind of flush out the, these rumors. The thing with Solace is since she doesn't have a weapon when the ability is on, she can be pretty vulnerable. At the end of the day, Solace is an intel collector. So if you know that she's- I'm not sure intel, if I agree with that. You... Um, so if you know anything about me uh, playing Siege, which again, <laughs> full admission, my fault if you don't know anything about my Siege play. Um, one of my least favorite operators to go against is Jackal. <coughs> <coughs> and the, the primary reason why I don't like him so much is because he'll start tracking you and you'll have like a full on lock as to where you are and you're going to have no clue where he is. I feel like with Solus, at the very least, once you start getting pinged, you can then activate your gadget, do a swivel around, figure out where the hell he's tracking you from. Uh, and then keep an eye on that. It's it's not perfect, but I feel like it gives you at least some kind of defense against him. So I don't know. I'm not I'm not sure if Jackal's so much of a counter so much as Solus is a counter to Jackal, if that makes any sense. Or they both e equal the playing field a little bit because they'll like spot each other and make each other um, have to play a game of chicken, basically. You have an idea on how you can probably trick her. That's also a very useful uh, counter to, to Solus. If you can think of ways, creative ways of kind of like lying to her, it can get some pretty cool, cool uh, interaction. I feel like Yana will be quite fun for that. Uh, who I'll be playing a lot of this season, uh, by the looks of things. Nighthaven Labs. It's an imposing research base, and it's the new map coming in Operation Solar. Oh, let's go. Now, I told you about banning maps last season, didn't I? Well, let me tell you this. You won't be able to ban this map at launch. You'll hear more on that later, but for now, team lead Jeremy Dowsett is here to take you on a tour of Nighthaven Labs. Go on. It is so it. This is actually one of the first maps we've done that actually incorporates the law. It's Night Haven. It's a research facility. The whole map is very, very clean. Even the outside, it has a very corporate feel. Just to give a quick. Um... I'm trying not to pause it too much, but just to give a quick TLDR, this map I am so excited for. Um, I love whenever a game like goes deep into lore when it gives you a map, uh, and this is exactly what they're doing right now. I I love the idea of actually bringing the fight to one of like the core locations of the siege lore. Um, this is gonna be great. But the inside, you'll see, you know, it's like a normal office. I hope there's a lot of detail to lab it. down in the basement. So the basement only has one bomb site. It's optimized for navigation and flow. And we went for a more optimized design. So it's quite compact in its shape, but there's a lot of entryways from the exterior helipad. And there's lots of ingress and egress that you can actually do to the sites. There's a little Easter egg down there, hiding away, not so subtly. So first floor has two bomb sites. I don't it's get it. It's very clean. There's a cafeteria. There's lots of small rooms, big rooms. There's a warehouse. Somebody comment me these right? walls. The warehouse is super interesting when you get close to it because it's an open area with a, a catwalk above it. So what you're going to find, especially if you're playing on the second floor or you're trying to come in from the second floor, dropping down onto the first floor, you're going to find it's interesting. The entryways on the catwalk give you some quite interesting sight lines. And that's going to be interesting. Quite line. sneaky and quite fun kills. Second floor, like the basement, uh, Cashmere's Cav is a little bit smaller, a little bit more compact. 
The warehouse is an interesting entry point because you, you're obviously exposed from gunfire below because of the catwalk. You go into the command center and servers, which are the bomb sites, and there's a couple of breakable walls off of the warehouse catwalk. There's an exterior wall on a balcony that allows you to. Um, I'm also looking for frost trap spots because frost is my meeting, absolute favorite, and I would love to be getting her. On one of the roofs, uh, there's a risk map. versus reward run out to reinforce a hatch. Otherwise, it opens up some pretty interesting lines of sight. But you need to, you know, wait for the prep phase to finish. Get out and you know, break the barrier. Get out and go you know, do it. The map should be going into all of the playlists that we normally release upon. It's not the same as any other map. You know, there's new, unique things in this one. And the map looks superb. The artists, it does. the writers, everyone did such a great job on this map. I'm looking forward to the reception. Playing with your friends is important. Sometimes they play on another platform. We know you've been waiting for this feature for a long time. I haven't. And it's I, coming. Everyone I play with is on PC. Crossplay and cross. Siege has been live for a long time now, and we know some players have moved around. We're happy that those players are going to be able to take back those hours they grinded in Siege and play with their friends on any console they choose. Okay, so I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm I'm going to skip most of that in my uh, in my little reaction video. But the quick TLDR for you guys that are curious about what you missed. Um, basically that in cross-play and cross-progression. So the entire idea of the cross-play means that the console guys can all play together and anyone that's got like different versions of the PC version can all play together and that will lower queue times. So that's one thing. The cross-progression section applies to all of it. Um, it won't share your rank from PC to console, console to PC, because obviously those are two, um, very different kettles of fish. But it shares like your skins, um, your... I don't know. My brain is not working. It, sh it shares your skins, your credits, your battle pass progress, all of that shit. It, it basically just, it allows you to have, reap all the rewards on both platforms rather than having to earn everything on both or you've earned something on one platform and now you can't use it on another one. You can share all that stuff. Uh, it just doesn't share the stuff that would be problematic going from PC to console. Um, it also shares bands, okay, you dirty fuckers. Um, yeah. But no. Hopefully that's a quicker version of that. Fighting toxicity and improving our anti-cheat measures are an ongoing priority for us. Here is player protection and game security director Emmanuel Larive to tell you more about the next I almost don't want to hear about this. And an update on preparation phase. I don't like it when people, like... I know this assures people, but saying too much about your anti-cheat the then gives season, players an idea coming, of how to try and get around it. We are very happy to announce that we will be launching the new reputation system. Since 2020, we have been deploying part of it during a shadow deployment to gather a lot of data from all player base in order to provide a sustainable solution for the long term. We will be starting with the first release in a beta display. The scoring will be private to yourself and available for all players. Yeah. The reputation system will be looking at your gameplay behaviors, but also your interaction that you have with players. Based on that, it will paint a portrait of you and assign a specific standing. Then based on this standing, we will be triggering during your eight, a set of actions that will be bonuses or penalties. More and more it just be with that screen fucking bright. Holy crap. I am actually really, really tired as I record this. Uh, so if I look like I'm about to fall asleep, um, you're probably right. Or maybe it's that I'm, I'm not fully awake in the first place. Um, but yes, good God. There's just a lot of white on the screen. More can I, can I get the dark version? More and more we will be applying modifiers to you in terms of alpha pack, renown, XP's and special drops. When we talk about penalties based on your low standing, we mainly talk about game restriction toward the game mode. So for example, a player will not have an access to the competitive playlist, but also the test server. But we will also have restrictions and modifier to the currency, the alpha pack, the progressions. So this first release is very huh? important and key for success.
we will be informing all players about how they are being perceived by the system, but also by the other players, so that they can act accordingly, but also adjust their behavior or interaction with other players. By providing guidance, information, and by bringing this new standing icon, we will be improving the play experience of everybody. By the way, I want to share with you some data toward the reputation penalties. We have seen the decrease of friendly fire by better guiding and informing all players. When we are looking at the number of rounds impacted with at least one team kill per round, we can see a decrease of 10%. And I'm talking about per round, not per match. So this is great. We want to move away from the toxicity that the people are facing and we want to improve the gameplay experience and provide a safer place That's for fair. everybody. This is key. We are really glad to say that we will be removing the friendly fire from the preparation phase. We heard you. By removing it, we are just securing the whole experience for everybody. So there will be no mistake anymore, so that everybody can focus on their preparation phase and then start the battle. In terms of design... Wait, uh, sorry, I, I fucking glossed over that. I, I didn't realize what they were just saying. Okay, so I can't be killed off by my fucking wanker teammates. I love how this entire video would have been completely free of swearing, and this is what will get it, like, age-restricted. Um, okay, I can see pros and cons to that, because there's going to be some people um, kicked for being AFK because their teammates can't get rid of them, um, which is going to hurt for uh, friends playing together. But same time, if you can't fucking be there and be square ready for the match, then uh, that's on you. Um, right, okay. I do like that, though. Um, that, that is a, that is a nice touch. There will be no damage, there will be no reverse friendly fire, and the bullet will not go through. I hope you will enjoy this new- Oh, uh, hang on, I'm just, I... <laughs> I'm, I'm seeing, I'm seeing something happen here, where a lot of friends are just gonna fire at each other while they've got a... Um, no friendly fire on, uh, and then the the match is gonna start. And they're gonna accidentally shoot their friends. Uh, yeah. I I I would wonder if there's gonna be a small spike on release of this uh, of uh of reverse friendly fire activation. Change. And Just we because will be of looking that. at your feedback during the season launch. We are always looking at new solution to bring more security into the game, but also to better protect all players against cheating. And this is a priority for us. The team over the Glad past months has been working hard to bring a new security measure to fight cheating. The goal is to decrease the cheating problem that you are facing, and we are really confident in this new solution that we are bringing into the game. We will monitor the effectiveness of it on all player base, on the cheater, and oh, for sure, on, I will come back to you with some insights. Operation Solar Raid is going to fully revamp the way our ranking system works. It is now time for you to shine in Ranked 2.0. I can't Associate lie, I can't producer be Killian this Calla will break down I'm the more of a casual of player. changes that are coming. Get ready to play more Ranked. <coughs> I may I may just heal right the now, others the at the end is a pure skill system in which there is only one value, the MMR. The MMR is used for rank and skill. Every start of the season, when we do the soft reset, because it's needed for rank progression, we are hurting the matchmaking fairness. After this soft reset, we have the placement matches to try to guess your rank as soon as possible. What are the changes in the core system? We are splitting skill and rank into two different values. The skill in one hand will be hidden and only used for matchmaking. On the other hand, the rank will be okay. and only used for progression. We are removing the placement matches because no, I'm not removing this because this is actually really is interesting. You no. will start your run progression at the beginning of the ladder. From now on, there will be rank points. There will be also five divisions per rank. This also means you fully cannot points. bitch about the matchmaking you Also, get. to help you in this progression, we included systems like the Demotion Shield that will prevent you from <laughs> losing. I I look a lot through Reddit. I I know that's cringe and stuff, but um, it's interesting sometimes what people post. But what's not interesting is the amount of times you, you'll go on Reddit, and let's say it's Siege. Um, there's other games that I see this with too, but Siege is a good uh, example of it. Um, 
I'll see a whole bunch of bitching posts about uh, somebody who is, oh, I'm gold, but I keep getting matched with platinums or diamonds or whatever. This is going to be a perfect way to say, shut the fuck up, because... Yeah, yeah, you can't complain, like, there will be people that will complain about the ranks and stuff anyway, but, um, these have nothing to do with your matchmaking, and I, yeah, it's gonna be a lot harder for people to make those posts and not get completely slammed out about it, um, but yeah. Ranks easy. Sorry, small, small the side round, system, but yeah. It's only giving you one chance per season, the one of your highest rank. For instance, if you are a silver player, you are not getting the chance below your rank bronze and copper, and that doesn't make any sense. From now on, there will be one reward per division, so five rewards per rank, with some exclusive new items. If you finish one season in Gold 5, you will get as well the rewards from Silver 1, Silver 2, Bronze and Copper. We also have an update regarding the squad restriction. With the old system, it was needed to put a skill limit within a squad to ensure balanced matches. Players should always be able to play with their friends. Because of that, it was a focus for us to provide a new solution. We are removing the squad restriction and including a new algorithm for squads that will ensure balanced matches. So please, mm. send us your feedback. We would love to hear your thoughts to keep improving. This will interest me a bit. So I don't actually play ranked, um, so I thought this wasn't going to be very relevant to me. Um, but I, I have been thinking about whether or not I do some weird... Um, youtube series or something where like i i try for a season of ranked and see how well i do um this could actually be a good season for it because i um i obviously haven't played much ranked so my mmr would be basically non-existent uh and it would be interesting to try it out i i don't think i've ever had a season where i've done enough placement games to get placed um so yeah the other thing is, though, that I'm not sure if their MMR system's in yet, or whether or not they've been collecting the data or whatnot. So, um, yeah, I suppose we're here. Now it's time to talk Battle Pass. Oh, show Battle me Pass the skins. Is introducing a brand new progression system. Oh, I'm not going to see skins, are Instead I? of a traditional linear progression, you will choose the path you take to target Oh, I heard about this. I thought this was coming last season, and so... unlock them sooner. Here's a little video to show you what I mean, and then business strategy director Mohammed Ben Hanada will tell you more. Right, come on, show me it. Rainbow Six Siege Battle Pass has evolved to become more tactical, offering you new ways to unlock the rewards that matter to you faster. We are introducing a novel progression system that allows you to create a custom strategy based on your interests. As you navigate the map, you can choose what paths and rewards to prioritize. For example, if you main smoke, you can follow the most efficient path to collect all smoke exclusive rewards. Each time you go up one Tell me there's not more smoke in battle things pass in this tokens. Scene. Now Jesus you can Christ, use these tokens been nice to unlock here. tiles. Exclusive rewards are available to all players on some of the tiles, while battle pass premium owners get even more. New Battle Pass gadgets like the Breach Charge will allow you to forge your own unique path. You can now strategize ways to unlock the rewards that matter most to you, or unlock all rewards in any order you choose. Premium Battle Pass owners receive exclusive perks, including early access to a new season's operator, 30% battle point progression boost, 10% in-game shop discount, and more. Rainbow Six Siege New Tactical Battle Pass. Plan your okay. path, progress your way, pick your rewards. We are really thrilled to bring this oh, new okay. battle pass going to, to our players. We're giving you more choices. I'm not sure about this. I, I, I'm going to have to see this in action. The rewards that you want first. This is going to be the new. I'm going to imagine there's some restrictions forward. to how it works. And as you saw, we've also added new gadgets for you to interact with the battle pass, such as the breach charge. Going forward into upcoming seasons, we'll be bringing more gadgets, so stay tuned for that. In April of 2019, we launched the Rainbow is Magic event. This was the, one of the most appreciated events no. for our community. One key aspect that was well talked about in the community was the drone skin, the cute little cat that we've had. So I'm really, really excited today to announce that we'll be bringing drone customization to the game. Yes! First off, it will launch in the Battle Pass, 
but stay tuned because it will be also available. That looks sick. And also in the oh my god. In the oh my god. <coughs> I'll admit though, this makes me look a little bit stupid because one of my main draws for getting the uh, the Twitch Elite was to get the uh, the drone customization. Um, so rip. Um, but yes, okay, no, those drones, yes, I I'm in for that. I <laughs> golden buzzer. Announcing updates affecting some operators' health and speed. Okay, well I've also heard about this. At leveling the playing field I'm a little scared. Movement while aiming down sights. I've heard Sens is Here's getting a game buff, designer, but Robert well, Cole a change that makes Barcelona sense to me. Studio. But um, this could this could really affect right my now, uh, three speed over. operators have a clear advantage when it comes to picking and fragging. We want to equalize the playing field as we feel like shooting should require precision and not luck. So this season, we are making it so all the operators will have the same ADS movement speed, which will be the ones from the three armor operators. Because of the ADS movement speed change, we are putting together another change to some of the health and speed of the operators. Okay. For example, we are changing sense from a three armor operator to a three speed operator. Because That's we feel fair. like their gadget functions much better with 100%. the speed, and it will this... help them with the Okay, side rant. This confused me so fucking much. I when Sens came out, I was so sure they were going to be a speed operator, uh, and then I played them, and I'm like, afterwards, I'm trying to figure out what the hell's going on. Because <sighs> like you throw the gadget down, and and I I want to be able to race in and take advantage of the the cover that I've got, but I can't when I'm fucking slow jogging around the place. Um, this suit sends so much more. Side so, takes um, and be happy. Another example is Dokabi. We are changing her from a two armor, two speed operator to a three speed operator. This makes sense. Because we feel like she should take advantage speed, of the, she will be the able cold. to move around the map and hack the defender's camera much better. Finally, another example is Dosa, which we're changing her from a two speed, two armor operator to a three armor operator. Because we feel like mm. the extra health will help her survive the shots to the limbs, the only exposed parts while carrying the shield. Okay, the I get it. Movement speed changes, I'm not well sure if I like it. Movement speed changes, we are excited to equalize the playing field and bring much more variety to the operator meta. Earlier in the show, I told you I think that nerf's not going to really fill me with happiness by Osa. Launch. I wasn't kidding. In this quality of life update, we'll tell you more about that, plus details on ability mode and more. Here again, our associate producer Killian Callow and game designer Matthew Lacombe. This is going to be interesting. A lot of people just like to ban the things they we don't know understand because they don't know how to. It's difficult to get into a new map. With Emerald Plains, we learned that map ban can be too restrictive in some situations. So, for the entire next season, all the maps will have the same chances of appearance in the map ban phase. When the new Night Heaven map will appear there, you will not be able to ban it. At the end of the phase, the random will decide which is the map played in that game. As mentioned, this change will be applied for the entire season and active in ranked and unranked playlists. Alternate ability mode is Emerald a continuation of what we started that. in iCaliber. Last year, during Season 4, we removed the ability to switch fire mode on your weapons. This season, we're replacing this input with the ability to change the fire mode of your gadgets without equipping your gadgets. For operators such as Capitao and Zofia, we will allow the players to switch ability mode when they're not equipped with the weapon. Oh, okay. If That's you're helpful. going toward the building, you want to breach something. I also like well, a bit of caps. You so, want yeah. to start with the impact grenades instead of the concussion grenade. So you can switch this as you move toward the building without equipping the launcher. So for Capital, you will be able to change bolts without equipping the crossbow. So if you want to cover your allies with the smoke bolt, you can just change it before you get to the risky part where you have to face the operators. You can just switch it beforehand. We want to hmm. reward players yeah. that have a plan. If you know what you're going to do, you have a routine, or you know your specific plan that you want to execute in this map, well, we give you the tool to be ready, more efficient when you do so. We started in a high caliber with this feature. We're improving it now, and we are going to use it in the future. We're going to expand on it. We can look forward as to have two inputs for a single operator, which means that reworks, new operators can benefit from this feature. When you're playing with a controller with your drones, you can move forward full speed, but when, whenever you start to input some diagonals in there, you will get a reduction of your speed 
up to 33%, which means that when you're really? turning and you're trying to move away from an opponent, you get slowed down a lot. We are removing this limitation so you can have a better experience when droning. It will feel more comfortable and you have more leeway when you try to drone. It will impact all of our drones, be it the regular drone, Mozzie's drone, Twitch drone, Flores drone, Echo drone even. So it will impact all of the controller players using drones. Operators such as Twitch and Echo, they have a high value gadget, they move around, they have a really good impact on the, the rounds, but it can be hard to navigate with a controller. Removing this will allow them to have a better time, better experience, and have you know a better impact on. I'm. <coughs> I want to agree. I just I know deep down that most people are going to get speed increase where they don't normally feel the speed increase, uh, and that's going to absolutely fuck them when they're trying to control their drone. Um, just a quick side note there. <laughs> on the game. All right, for this one, I think a little story is going to explain it. Start of the round, you locate the bomb, there's a high con, you know that you're attacking this bomb site. One minute inside the round, your teammate falls, drops the diffuser on the floor, and now you, suddenly you don't remember where the bomb sites are. Well, we've all been there, right? With this okay. change, what we're Thank trying God. to have I'm actually both really the bombs icon this. and the diffuser icon, so you know exactly what you have to do. What we have right now is you have two bombs icon or a diffuser icon on screen. We are combining those two together. I if feel you like the bomb site previously, they will always remain visible. They will either be full yellow because you have the diffuser on. The bigger lesson or should be, be don't let because the, uh, the, the stupid Amari Russia take the, your take the diffuser. Bigger playstyle is important, and the shooting range is a great place to get your weapon and attachment pairings just right. Game designer Robert Cole is back to detail a new update for the shooting range to help you get everything dialed in. I think I know what it's gonna be, um, and I'm all for it. We are very happy with how the shooting range is functioning right now. But it's true that players struggle to remember which guns and attachments they tested, as well as they cannot compare the recalls of the different weapons. This season, thanks to our amazing Shanghai team, we're introducing a new feature to the shooting range, the shooting records. It will be accessible through the same input as the scoreboard, and it will help players keep track of the different weapons they tested. We hope that this new feature will help players keep track of all the different weapons they tested, as well as compare the different recoils of the weapons. Now, as a player, you will be able to okay. find the best loadout that works for you, without having to remember all the different weapons and attachments that you tested. I thought they were going to make it so you could change the, 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 the attachments. The team is continuing to expand in, Siege's uh, accessibility range, options no. to ensure more members that's of right, our that's community more helpful. can play the way they want to play. From Archive Studio, associate producer Jane Gonchar is here to share more on new team color customization and advanced Ooh. controller options. We are very excited about our new update for accessibility. In season four, we spot the most important objects and gadgets in game that requires color change. So now your team color preference oh. will be applied to the generic gadgets, CCTV, drones, operators, gadgets. That's actually super teams. helpful. Your team is blue and the opposite team is red by default. Yes, but yes, 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 yes. But blind players, it's harder to distinguish some objects in certain situation, so we brought ability to customize, starting with three colors, blue, red, and orange. Your color preference could be changed and applied anytime you need. I feel like that's going to be easier fact, for me to see the difference too, and I'm not colorblind. We recognize just... who owns object in game. As an example, Naturally, certain you're colors in attacker's better. team, and the opposite team has mozzie. So when you enter the room and you see your drones and it's activated, you see the LEDs working and it's colored on your enemy's team color. That means that enemies hacked your drone and using it at the moment. In year eight, we aim to bring more accessibility options. So we are looking how to expand the list of objects, gadgets, lasers, and even bring more colors to customize. This is a process and it's just the beginning. Aiming is like an that. important component for Siege. And finally, you could play Operation Solar Raid on the Season Test Server this week. 
You can put Solus in me. your gadget to the test. I, I never played the new Night Haven Labs map uh, which and get a, a feel weird. for the new features but. of Operation Solar Raid. Have fun, and be sure to share your feedback on R6 Fix. Now, before we go, we have that one more thing just for you. Oh, okay. It was born of oh, a yes, I know what that's this is. close to our heart and sure to make a few new Yana fans happy out there. Here is the new Elite skin for Yana, inspired by Nier Automata. I need to admit, I already bought this. <laughs> I, um, I, I may or not have guessed that it may be coming out with this, so, um... I wasn't, I wasn't actually able to watch this uh, when they streamed it, but when I get, got back home from work, I made sure I picked it up straight away. Um, cause I had a feeling it may come out with the, uh, with the panel. This is such a sick skin. I might even just run the headpiece on some other stuff because it, it is just, it's very, very nice. And you gonna show the Mav one? Maverick got one as well. Um, not, not an elite, but it's a, uh, I think it's meant to be a skin from the same set. That was pretty good. There was, there was a lot more in there um, that was interesting to me than I thought. Um, before, just to be clear, when I'm talking about drone customization, I thought they were about to announce Rainbow as Magic was going to be the uh, <laughs> the season's game mode, and I was going to be not happy. Um, for a few reasons. Um, I, I feel like a lot of those operators that got the Rainbow as Magic skins uh, already have been very nice this year. Um, for starters, that, that that's just a just a starting thing. But yeah, tell me what you think about this season. I um, I reckon it's going to be one of the strongest seasons that they've uh, released. But I've just in general been very very impressed with Year Seven from these guys. Ubisoft, there is probably absolutely no chance you're going to see this video. But on the negative one percent chance that you do, um. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Kudos. You guys deserve a pat on the back. Um, because year six, I feel like there was some good ops, but in general, year six was a bit of a stinker. Uh, year seven has been an absolute cracker for you guys. Um, the new op, I, I think she's going to be quite cool. I don't know if she's going to break the meta because, again, I don't play high level, but I will probably be keeping track of um, some pro gameplay to see roughly how they use it and, and see whether it breaks the meta and whether it will just stay stay pretty subpar. Um, her guns, though, make me think that she's already going to be quite a popular pick. Um, I know a lot of Rook players and a lot of Doc players love their P90, so there's probably a lot of happiness going around that um, Solace will also have the P90. Uh, as well as the SMG-11, that thing, I... I can't believe how many defenders they're giving that thing to um, after deciding that it wasn't good enough for Sledge or it was too good for Sledge. But yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm quite looking forward to actually playing Solus and um, giving her a well. Her cosmetics, I, I hope that they live up to the hype because um, her base outfit looks great. Please, please, please let the uh, other cosmetics look nice. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like sending out some kind of like sending out some kind of prayer um what else do they talk about the new battle pass looks great all the cross progression stuff sounds quite good um <coughs> there's probably some controller sensitivity stuff that i've skipped um in the video but uh if you play on controller it, everything looks like it's going to be working a lot more smoothly um oh yeah the the ranking system 100 percent. that that is what they're describing with the change they're making to ranking and toxicity on the rest of it, it is something that a lot of games should really aspire to get to. I know a lot of games aren't as big as Siege, so it's it's not really as realistic to do that. Um, but Siege definitely... Um, I think Ubisoft... 
in their year six, where they didn't really do much with the game, they realized how much risk they're putting the game at by not giving it content. They have more than figured out how to please the new players who are just finding everything cool um, and they're just getting really into the stuff. How to please the picky players who just want to have a couple of the battle pass skins um but they don't want to go through the whole thing they know how to please the veteran players who want um massive holes in the game to be fixed and who want different balancing changes to happen they genuinely are putting in a lot of effort this season so again it probably sounds like i'm sucking the dick of you soft here but i kind of am but well played to you lads well played to you lads but let me know what you think in the comments down below. Please like and please subscribe if you can, because um, it'll be a big help to me. Let me know if you want to see more reaction stuff. Um, I know this is a bit of a different one, but I, I was thinking in the future, it might be easier for me to actually do more reacting kind of stuff on YouTube, like at just maybe small trailers normally. And then if there's a game I play a lot of, I might react to big panel stuff like this. Um, I don't know. Let me know what you think. Uh, also, let me know what games you want to see me play, uh, if you'd actually like to see me play Siege on this channel. Um, and if you like the idea of my little um, noob plays ranked for the first time idea that I was uh, talking about earlier. Um, but I'm going to leave it there. Um, thank you everyone for watching. Uh, I hope to see some of you tomorrow, because the night will be dropping and I would love to do a stream. <laughs> um, we'll see how that goes. But yeah, I'm going to end the recording here. So, bye guys! <laughs>